When you're dealing with nanotechnology, a lot of really strange things all of a sudden seem possible or even natural. For the time being, we're trying to avoid calling it invisibility. In the future, I think we can envision a type of product that would you could legitimately call invisibility, but I think you're going to see that there are certain distortions in the light that make it roughly visible, so we're calling it cloaking right now. Visible light, the wavelength of visible light is on the order of nanometers. Nanoparticles are on the right scale to sort of interact with that and manipulate it. In principle, it's actually possible to get an object that will guide light around itself. The sphere is this sort of easiest shape to do. Right now we can only cloak convex shapes, and that has to do with the sharp angles. So things like spheres and even cylinders, for the most part, we can do a pretty good job with. Squares, we can do a halfway decent job with, and then when we get to things like triangles where they have the more acute angles, that's where it sort of bends the light in a problematic way. A lot of other research groups have tried to build three-dimensional structures that can do this sort of light guiding, but working with nanoparticles, we prefer to use self-assembly. And in turn, we prefer to use liquids because as the liquid dries, the particles can come together in a particular way. So by controlling the structure of the particles, we can control how they come together. Go ahead. Now it's important to get the droplet size right since this is sort of a surface area effect, so that's why we're using this atomizer. Of course, it takes a while for the students to get the technique down. If things don't dry evenly, that adds to the distortion of the light. So we just chose to use a simple hair dryer, and it also speeds things up for the demonstration. So what future uses do we envision for this paint? I mean, of course, beyond the general novelty of being able to move about undetected, um, I think there are going to be a lot of applications for this. So, of course, the military is very involved. Invisible buildings and invisible vehicles. We provide new ideas, and it's society that decides, you know, how new technologies will be used. Because, of course, we envision this being used on the skin. Uh, we want everything to be safe. If this stuff gets onto the wrong hands, you know, reverse engineered by people who wish to do harm. I mean, it sounds like a movie or something, but that's the kind of thing I think that keeps me up at night a little bit. Well, basically, um, the words would be too great to say teleportation, but in a way, the broken key has uh, disappeared from the current location and it showed up in a different ion chamber 